Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. What I'm going to be showing you today is my latest design for a multi-function gearbox. Uh, now the idea for a multi-function gearbox came about from a video I did a few weeks ago on this gearbox in the background and this gearbox sort of came about from the scenario that I was thinking about where for example you're trying to build a remote controlled car and that car you want to be able to drive it you know, backwards and forwards, you want to be able to steer it as well as change gears. Now that is three different functions, so you've got the driving, the steering and the, uh, the gear changing and of course you're going to need three motors in general to be able to control those three functions and not only that, because each remote controller is going to control uh, two different motors uh, you're going to have to have uh, two uh, different transmitters as well as two receivers Now you might be in the scenario where you, know, you haven't got that many transmitters or receivers or that many motors and one way around that is to be able to build a, a gearbox that implements uh, more than one function using just a single motor. Alright, so the multi-function gearbox I presented a couple of weeks ago is the one on the right here that implemented two different functions. Uh, one being just rotating the output and the other one being changing the gears of that output. So this has got four different speeds that uh, this controls, uh, namely uh, you know, three forward speeds, slow, medium and fast, and one reverse speed. And the gearbox I'm going to be presenting today is the one on the left here and instead of having just one output what I've done is created two outputs and each of these has got two different uh, speeds uh, namely being forward and reverse so each of these outputs can be selected to go either forwards or reverse with just one single motor. Okay so how do you get a gearbox to implement more than one function using a single motor? Well the trick is to realize of course that a motor can go forwards and backwards and what you can do is when the motor goes forwards you implement one function and when it goes backwards it implements a different function. So in the case of this gearbox that I presented a couple of weeks ago, uh, what I've got is that when the motor is going forwards we're just simply driving the output and when the motor goes backwards we've got it changing gears between four different gears, uh, three forward gears and one reverse gear. Okay so in case you haven't seen the video from a couple of weeks ago I'll just give you a quick demonstration of this gearbox in action. So currently we are in first gear, this is the output, I've got my remote control. I'll turn it on, as you can see we uh, got the output going forwards. Uh, put the uh, remote back and it changes gears onto gear 2. Go like that, gear 3. And finally we have got reverse. So as you can see here we have got a multi-function gearbox, uh, the single motor implements two different functions, driving the gearbox as well as gear changing with a single remote. Ok so you might be wondering how do you get a gearbox to react differently depending on the direction of rotation of the motor, well the trick is to use a mechanism like this, so what I've got here is a 16 tooth gear that is connected through this loose lift arm that can move left and right to another gear, and what happens is that as that gear is being rotated by the motor, it will either swing to the left or to the right depending on the directions. For example, if the motor turns clockwise, it will connect to the left output, the left black 12 uh, tooth gear. And as the motor changes direction and goes in the opposite direction, it will connect to the right output gear. And that's kind of how you split the uh, functionality depending on the direction of the motor, either connects to the left gear or to the right gear. Okay, so even though this mechanism works really well, it does have one drawback and that only works uh, when it's orientated the right way relative to gravity. So for example, at the moment, it, uh, like I've demonstrated, it works fine either in this direction or this direction, but as soon as you rotate at 90 degrees in this direction, there's a problem because of course gravity is pulling on that lift arm. And as I try to drive the bottom one, it works fine, but as soon as I change directions, it won't connect to that uh, now top output gear and of course that's a big issue. Now one simple way of uh, solving that that uh, has been suggested is to replace that centre pin with a friction pin and what that does it uh, pretty much makes uh, the system want to actually move the lift arm rather than rotate the gear because of that friction and then of course it does move up and down like that but that's got the major drawback of uh, a lot of friction losses and that is absolutely not ideal. Now luckily I did find a solution to the problem, it turned out the trick was to add one of these small rubber components to the bottom of the gearing mechanism such that, that bottom gear just kind of touches it uh, as it swings across and can push off it in order to go in the other direction. And also by moving these small output gears upwards one Lego unit there's enough clearance once it does fully engage to, to stay clear of that, uh, that rubber component. Uh, so I'll just show you how that works. If I uh, have the mechanism connected to the bottom gear, then as it changes directions it pushes off that bottom gear, 
touches the rubber or pushes off the rubber and connects to the top gear quite nicely like that. So yes, this is a very good solution. It works really well. There's no friction issues. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, a great solution. Now another small issue I found with this particular gearbox was around the implementation of the gear stepper mechanism. So what I've got here is an implementation of the Bugatti uh, gear stepper like that. Now of course this is a uh, very uh, nice, beautiful mechanism. It works uh, really well. It allows you to step a, uh, an axle at 90 degree steps. But what I found was that in combination with that uh, direction uh, detector uh, that I've talked about before is that it would kind of jam uh, once you did change gear so if I uh, demonstrate that and move the gear back so we can see the, uh, the lift arm move across um, and change gears but it kind of gets jammed it kind of gets stuck and it doesn't naturally move back to the middle by itself uh, and that I thought was an issue so basically what it forced you to do is to move forward and to disengage that lift arm you had to move the motor forwards uh, and that would engage of course the other function which you may or may not want to at that point in time you may just want that lift arm to swing back naturally and disengage and be ready for another gear change but you couldn't really change the next gear unless you did go forward and then uh, change backwards again so the way I got around that in this gearbox rather than using that stepper mechanism I've simply got a continuous stepper so what that means is I've just got an axle that kind of rotates a knob wheel uh, at 90 degree steps uh, with a stepping mechanism and what that means is that instead of moving the joystick back and forth to change uh, you know function one at a time you pretty much keep it there and keep rotating until you've uh, selected the function that you're after okay so those are some of the improvements I've made to this gearbox implementation uh, now the other main difference of course is the actual functions that it implements so the gearbox in the behind there from a couple of weeks ago implements uh, four different gears so we've got a, a one output and four different gears and the difference here is that this particular gearbox actually implements two outputs and each of those outputs has got two directions so either forwards or backwards so rather than having a single output with four gears we've now got two outputs with effectively two gears uh, one being forward and one being reverse okay so i'll just tell you a little bit about the implementation of the actual gearbox so at the top here i've got a built-in large power functions motor that then drives the new and improved uh, direction selector we then either select the gearing on the left or the gearing on the right the gearing on the left is what selects the output function uh, through the orange rotary catch in the middle there that drives two different switches to be able to switch between the different output functions either driving output 1 or output 2 and changing the directions as well then when we select uh, the right part of the gearbox that is the actual driving the output uh, depending on that selection that was made it will either drive the left output in one direction or the other direction or the right output in one direction or the other direction okay I'll just demonstrate the gearbox in action now I've connected the remote receiver I've connected that to the battery box that's been turned on I'll just first demonstrate the uh, changing between different gearing functions so as I move the joystick backwards uh, we're now stepping through the different function selection as you can see by this blue indicator uh, we can stop the uh, remote uh, whenever we want at the function that we're after so for example after this function here uh, we can now move the joystick forward and we can see that the left output is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction uh, we could then go to the next step and now we're going in the forward direction we can now go to the next function and now we see that the uh, right output is rotating in the uh, clockwise direction and finally we can go and change that to the reverse direction and again we can just carry on and change between the functions that are after now the great thing about this function selection you can just keep going around until uh, you're at the function that you're after so for example that one and we can activate it by moving the joystick forwards also just demonstrate the uh, direction selector works no matter what the orientation relative to gravity so again you can hear you can here you can see the uh, that, uh, that direction selector and as I rotate the gearbox it still works fine independent of, uh, of the orientation relative to gravity so yes that solution works great and uh, yes so this implements the two different output functions unlike the gearbox from last time just had the one function but the four gears now we've got the two different functions with uh, two directions each so that is my latest gearbox i hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time thanks for watching